Today, I'm, my topic is security. Uh, I'm not talking about your burglar bars or alarms at home. I'm talking about your data security. Everybody, and once a day, most probably goes online. If you are online, you basically are vulnerable for whether it be cyber attacks or whatever the case may be. So let's look at uh, what's currently happening in the market. As you can see, um, cyber attacks, as we know, are an increase. That's just basically the way life is going. So let's look at some statistics. You can see from the relevant information that the system glitches, human error, are basically partial to what actually is causing system downtime, whatever the case may be. But the main problem is malicious attacks. It's on the rise, as you can see. Now, that is a big concern for people that use any IoT device, such what Geotab is currently at the moment. That's why Geotab takes security very um, in high regard. So, not only do you have to look at cyber, uh, security as uh, disruption in your business, you have to think of financial um, degradation you can have. I mean, the proper attack at the proper time, depending on your business size, can actually cripple you. Um, we have to, you can think of ransomware. If your backup and everything else gets corrupted, how do you recover from that? And also, if you look at some of the lifespans, some of the phishing guys or spearing or, or clickbait or like malicious emails, they actually stay in your system for quite some time. So they actually wait till the opportunity is ripe to strike. Whether you have a big cash flow coming in or close to payroll, whatever the case may be it. And it could be a costly and a lengthy um, time to actually recover from that. What also is important is, as I said, IoT devices are on the increase. We're currently sitting about 25 billion odd IoT devices, and that's actually increasing every five, 10 years um, by maybe five to 10 billion, depending on what it is there. You can think of your own home as, as such. Most people maybe are carrying two mobile phones. People have smart TVs, smart fridges, your alarm, everything else is IP cameras. So it's a good thing to think about, you know, how it actually can impact you at the end of the day. So let's look at uh, globally, what countries are most vulnerable to actually cyber attacks. This is based on um, current studies that was done across all countries in different worlds there. So if you look at it, there's like different uh, countries that come up, different regions, so it's not basically specific. Um, the one I want you to concentrate on is obviously South Africa. You can see that's with the sixth um, most vulnerable country. And you know there's hundreds of countries, so that's actually a big concern for us. I mean, we're sort of seen as a country that can't actually manage any sort of cybersecurity or crime, whatever the case it can make, which is actually a, a, a very uh, critical point. Now, let's look at some countries that are best prepared. You'll find, again, it's not really linked to a specific zone or area. So, just to sort of get to the bottom section, it's Canada and the United States. The reason for this uh, will be apparent in my next slide. So if we look at how Geotab actually does security, there's different factors that actually leads to that. So let's look at first the data centers, because that's where your data is actually being housed at this point in time. So the Google engine we use, it's based at the Google Cloud. It's basically available everywhere. But we distinctly have data centers in the United States, purely because the guys are prepared for any uh, cyber attacks there. Also, Europe and Asia, and you've seen in the, the previous slide, it's growing to other countries as well. The reason for this is also some uh, countries have their own laws, especially Europe, privacy laws, so it makes sense to house that data in country, so you don't have any um, government issues, whatever the case may be for that. The second thing is we also make use of random key cards for the guys accessing the actual physical uh, server there, fingerprint, uh, detection, and even laser beam detection, so it's almost like Mission Impossible James Bond. So you can't just walk into the place and do whatever you want to do. The other thing we also do is obviously intelligent logging. So if someone logs into the terminal, he leaves the terminal unlocked, it automatically locks. If you put a password in incorrectly five or six times or two times, it actually locks the terminal. So it's got that intelligence things to keep uh, the guys at bay that actually sort of work on the system there for us as such. We also obviously do um, external penetration testing and internally. Um, the reason for that is obviously you want to we want people to test your system to see if it's robust out in the field. 
Obviously, we also do regular audits based on that information, so you'll be able to see what kind of, what kind of results were done based on that uh, penetration test. Obviously, the big thing you have to know is you have to be transparent. We know also there's some companies in SA that basically got hacked. You actually have to sort of report it. It's just, it's, it's, you want to be transparent to your customers there. So we sort of, lucky enough, Jutab does not have any uh, tech. There hasn't been any breach in our system since we've some implementation um, from using the Google Cloud system. So as I said, it's, it's a very robust and secure system. You can, you can count on that. We obviously, with the cloud system, that gives you load balancing. So you, if they sees there's a lot of people on one server, it obviously kicks you to another server. And obviously, it also comes with uh, uptime and managing those kind of things back up so you know your data is safe. And it gets redundant to different sites and things like that. So now, <coughs> the other part is the device, because that's obviously sending the data. So how are you protecting that device that's connecting to everything else? So you saw in the presentation that, um, I mean, we use AES encryption, and it's also, it's our device as well as third-party devices. So you can't just think that, okay, I'm gonna plug something else in, that then becomes vulnerable, sending the data to us, it still gets encrypted in the same method. So you, you can be raised assured that it's not just our device, it's all the devices that connect to our MyGeta platform that actually is getting protected. We obviously, <clears throat> don't modify the information or delete anything else in there. So the data you see is the data you get. It doesn't go to a fault or somewhere else where someone removes a GPS point or anything else like that. We sort of stand by our data. Obviously, all the information from that uh, gateway server uh, gets encrypted with T TSL connection. You'll see the certificate on your top right and in your browser server, which is basically certificates and wildcards to open information there for that. Obviously, as I said in also in the main presentation, I mean, you don't get uh, the Department of Homeland Security sort of to invest in your, your business if you don't have security behind you. So, I mean, that was a big critical point for us to get that actually accreditation from them and be able to support them in the security environment there. So, again, also what they touched on the main stage is the FIPS 140 um, accreditation and obviously we're the sole provider for California for that, for that encrypting library. So what this basically means is it's almost, you can think of how people would uh, break a lock. You would have maybe have three keys to open one specific lock. Key. Now you have three keys, but the lock keeps changing. So every time you try a new key, the lock has changed. So you can't use the same key for every application all the time. So that's pretty much what that algorithm actually does in the, at the back end there. So now that's the portal. Obviously the, 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 the side that the customer is actually using. So once the guy logs in, it's the same, again, encryption. There's certificates there, there's wildcard uh, authentication, everything like that. Also, <clears throat> we make sure we don't open up any necessary ports because it's just HTTP traffic. Um, some of the guys that used the system previously will remember, you had a download that you had to install, we actually moved away from that system because you had to open certain ports, so we actually discontinued that uh, functionality altogether. Obviously, the servers are um, monitored by firewalls, and the guy and the internet facing servers are actually behind uh, multiple firewalls to make sure obviously the, the data is uh, correct and uh, secure. We obviously use TSL authentication for unique username and password. That then also gets linked to uh, a live list. So people that use password per se as a password will actually kick you out and say you can't use something like that because it's a known password, it doesn't make sense to use something like that. We also don't store the password anywhere. So I can't go into the system and tell you your password was cat52 or something else. I can't read that information. So you have to reset it to get a new password too. So I can't actually decrypt it there to, for you to be able to see what it was. We obviously have a complete audit log of what in transaction gets uh, done in the MyGeoTab uh, application. With the audit log, obviously we don't modify or delete it again because you want to stand by your data. You can then see what someone has done and what the case may be. The nice thing also that also Donovan touched on is the hierarchy system. So if you want someone to access a certain part of the software, you actually give them rights to certain groups and also security clearances to make uh, life easier for the user and more secure. So the data also is not uh, visible to any other guys. So you might find there's one or two other customers who share the same database or same server. You can't sort of 
log into that site by accident, whatever the case is there, it's they're completely separate with security and everything else, so that's basically kept uh, to the minimum in there for that. So in a nutshell, it's pretty much your device that goes to the cloud, that sort of the data center and into the portal where the user actually looks at, sorry, the information on the screen there for it. Uh, two, two slides I want to show you is actually how can you control the security within my GeoTab. You've got your access um, sort of password policy, if you can call it that. Uh, so you can actually specify the password can't be less than six characters. It has to have a numeric or alphanumeric number in there, special character. You can't use a previous password you used before. So depending on the business, uh, sort of that your own policy internally, you can adjust your uh, password policy to your own internal, whether it be an ISO procedure or other cases there, so it complies with your own business solution. The second screen is what they call privacy mode. So you'll find, especially people always worry about you track the vehicle to see where the guy is. Especially salespeople have an issue where um, if you track my vehicle, from let's say eight o'clock if I go to a pub or something else, you know, I don't want people to see it. So you can actually in privacy mode, you can actually disable the logging information for that device during that time. So for instance, if it's from eight to five, anything after five does not get recorded. But what we still do is we look out for events. So accident event will still trigger and you'll get notified because you want to have that kind of information because if something goes wrong, you wouldn't want to be able to assist the guy there for that. Any questions? <laughs> no problem. Can't decrypt them. <laughs> I don't have the key. Yes. Uh, Rian, with regard to uh, 256AS encryption. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Rian. Uh, with regard to the added encryption, um, how much has that actually added to in terms of data cost? Because every time you add an encryption layer, you've got so much more packeting of the data or, yeah. or bracketing of the data. We, we sort of made it to keep it to a minimum. That's also why with the, as the device grows, we actually sort of want to have more memory um, into the device as well. So you can actually, uh, the firmware can be more robust. And also when you're sending the packets, I said, uh, on average, the device maybe uses 30 to 50 meg there. So the encryption actually is a very small part of that sort of chain as the data comes in. It just depends, obviously, how much information you are getting. It's the same as someone that doesn't get engine data compared to a guy that gets engine data. Even with the added security, that, that practically will still be less than the guy that's actually getting engine data because the parcel is much smaller than the other information there for it. 